Good afternoon, I'm Ed Lingal. This is One News Now. Davao City is on its fourth day under GCQ or General Community Quarantine. Unlike the past few days where PUJs opted not to travel, some of them have gotten back on the road today. Let's get the latest situation in the city with Jem Abansanya reporting live from Davao City. Jem, kamusta kayo dyan? Bok, we're now seeing PUJs flying the streets of Davao City, but they're still not enough to cater residents who are going to work today or those who are running essential errands. In a terminal in Toril, Davao City, only four of the PUJs are back on the road. Passengers were left stranded at the terminal, waiting for the next available jeepney. Those whose patients run out after getting stuck in the long line just went home. A lot of the drivers are actually lining up at the LTFRB Region 11 office to get special permits to operate. Davao City Mayor Indaisara Duterte yesterday said that the LTFRB should have inspected PUJs earlier so that permits could have been released sooner. This could have had lessened transportation moves in the city. Since yesterday, traffic has worsened around the city, especially in downtown area. So Mayor Sara again imposes a truck ban from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Monday to Friday. The local chief executive also said that authorities are having a hard time inspecting large volume of vehicles on checkpoints, which causes traffic. Bocas per DOH 11, the numbers of COVID-19 cases here in Davao region increased to 215 with 15 new cases reported yesterday. Bo? Jem, kamusta naman yung volume ng mga tao na naghihintay sa kalsada ng mga masasakyan? Bo, kanina nga sa mga nadaanan natin, no, alam mo, na kawawa yung sitwasyon ng ilang mga pasahero dahil ang dami talagang mga naghihintay sa bawat kanto. And dun sa terminal, Bo, alam mo, talagang napakahaba ng kanto, I'm sorry, ng uh, linya ng mga pasahero at halos umabot na nga ng almost 500 meters yung pila na naabutan natin kanina doon sa isang terminal sa Turil, Davao City. Tapos po, uh, mukhang uh, naiinis o kaya, kaya ay nakukustrate si Mayor uh, Sara Duterte doon sa uh, compliance sa mga tao dyan sa mga patakaran. Uh, tama ba yun? Uh, are, are we getting uh, the right signals na, na si Mayor mismo ay eh, naiinis na doon sa mga pasaway? Yes po, kasi mismo si Mayor Sara Duterte, nakita niya yung ilan nga dito sa mga pasaway na residente na umiikot-ikot na tila hindi naman ganoon ka-importante yung kanilang mga lakad. Ayon nga kay Mayor Sara Duterte kahapon, meron siya nakitang ilan na umupo pa sa may park and merong ilan daw na namamasyal na wala naman daw bit-bit na mga grocery bags kundi umiikot-ikot lang at tumitingin-tingin doon sa mga ito nga, mga cellphone accessories. Kaya nga ito yung uh, reasons, kaya medyo nainis nga ito si Davao City Mayor. Sara Duterte. Pero meron bang indikasyon na maghihigpit pa si Mayor Sara ulit kung sa mga yung mga violators and specifically yung mga binanggit mo? Alam mo, Bok, so far naman, wala namang binabanggit si Mayor Sara Duterte kung ibabalik ba sa ECQ. But then, patuloy nga or lagi niya nga paalala sa publiko na iwasan ito ang mga matataong lugar, especially itong mga barangay na very high risk areas kung saan mataas yung bilang ng mga positibo sa COVID-19. Okay, Jem, huli na lang. Ha? Baka sakaling uh, alam mo. Uh, kasi si Pangulong Duterte, eh, dumalaw sa Davao City nung weekend. Uh, kamusta yung kanyang pagbisita? At siya ba yung nakaalis na dyan? Nakabalik na Manila. Bok, naghahanap nga tayo ng makukuha ng impormasyon patungkol sa posibleng naging itinerary ni Davao City. I'm sorry ni President Rodrigo Duterte dito nang uh, bumisita siya sa Davao City. Pero so far, hindi pa kasi nagre-reply yung ating mga sources. Maging si Mayor Sara Duterte, sabi niya nga ay uh, wala pa siyang idea kung ano nga yung mga naging lakad ni Pangulong Duterte dito sa Davao City. Okay, maraming salamat. Jem Abansenya reporting live from Davao City. Face masks and social distancing have become a part of our daily lives because of the coronavirus crisis. But for some workers who rely on public transportation, biking and walking are becoming the new normal. Carlo Castillo has more on that story. Vehicles continue to fill EDSA on the second work day for some businesses in the metro. With public transportation still suspended, many workers are left with no choice but to bike to work or just walk. 
This is the new normal for Nelson Rosales, who started this day early because he had to walk from Caloocan to Cubao, where he's working at a factory. Maga po. Maga po. Maga po. Six. Anong oras ang pasok doon, yung Cubao? Alas 9 po. Alas 9. Para ano, sir? Ito lang ano. Trabaho. Para may pangkain din, ano? Some cities, though, are allowing tricycles to operate. This group of tricycle drivers near a shopping mall in Quezon City are glad to be back on the road, even if they're only limited to carrying just one passenger. Okay na rin po, sir, kasi kahit pa paano, makakapasada po kami, may konting panggastos. Bawal po ang ano, bawal ang dalawa, isa-isa lang. Oh, bawal ang dalawa, bawal ang tatlo. Bawal, isa lang talaga, isa kay. There's a caveat, though. Tricycles in QC are only allowed to operate twice per week to limit drivers' exposure to the virus and to avoid traffic congestion. Isang libo yung unit namin. Bale, ang babiyay sa lunes hanggang bernes, nag-200 lang po. Tapos pala din Sabado Linggo, 500, haatiin po yung tag-isang libo. Face masks are now becoming a part of our daily lives. As much as social distancing has become the norm. Now that the new quarantine rules have allowed limited movements in some areas, it looks like biking or walking to work is turning out to be the new normal for the labor force. Unless, of course, you're part of the lucky ones who have been provided with shuttle services by your company. For News 5, Carlo Castillo, We Are One News. Public transport remains suspended in Metro Manila as the nation's capital is still under a modified enhanced community quarantine. But transport agencies are already preparing strategies for mass travel once NCR moves to general community quarantine or GCQ. MMDA spokesperson Celine Pilago says they will run a single route on EDSA. Buses that will be using this major highway may only travel between Monumento in Caloocan to the Mall of Asia in Pasay City. The MMDA expects that uh, with this change, the number of PU PUBs traveling along EDSA will be cut to just around 600 from the previous 2,500 units. The agency is also looking at reducing bus stops along the thoroughfare as well as moving the bus lane on the left side of the road. Cavite Governor John Vicremulia has released new guidelines for malls in his province who wish to reopen. These guidelines include shorter operating hours from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. and the opening of just one entrance and exit. As usual, mall security should enforce social distancing inside and in the vicinity of the establishment. Only those with quarantine passes shall be allowed in company IDs, employment certificates, travel and transit passes will no longer be honored. Remulia explains that some people, and we quote, abused the system, which allowed them to present valid IDs in lieu of queue passes. Malls should likewise have a quota for the number of people inside the establishments at any given time. Each mall goer will be given an hour to stay inside the mall. To enforce this, everybody will have to hold on to a time card that reflects the time that they enter the establishment. Also, malls can no longer play music through their PA systems. A one-way foot traffic scheme should also be implemented and shops have their own entrances cannot, that have their own entrances cannot let people into the mall via their own portal. Finally, Remulia says the public cannot go city or town hopping. Malls will only allow residents of the area where they are located. The exceptions to the rule are currently flashed on your TV screens. Remulia also urged his constituents to refrain from bargaining over these guidelines. He said he is not in the mood to argue and says it is all for the safety and health of Caviteños anyway. As a final note, Remulia says that he might consider lifting the liquor ban if people will closely observe the new mall policy. A Davao-based pediatrician is swearing by the use of anti-inflammatory drugs as treatment for COVID-19. In an interview with 1PH, Dr. Richard Mata claimed that it is not the virus that's been killing people, but the overreaction of antibodies to the pathogen. 
He explains that the reason why children are generally safe from COVID-19 is that they have yet to develop complex antibodies in their immune systems. As for adults, Mata explains that when COVID-19 enters the lungs, the body aggressively reacts and crowds the lungs with antibodies, thereby making it difficult for the patient to breathe. He says anti-inflammatory meds will help quell this so-called overreaction. Hydroxychloroquine po is an anti-inflammatory. So, basta anti-inflammatory po, open na po dyan dahil ang COVID-19 po kasi is really an inflammation. Kasi ang maraming hindi naiintindihan, uh, marami nang naglalabasan ng mga report na it's about cytokine storm. Ang big sabihin po noon, overreaction of the antibodies. So, karamihan sa COVID, kung napapansin natin, namamatay ang patient sa 14 days above, no? Mm -hmm. Hindi namamatay sa first week. Kasi kung namatay ang patient po sa first week, ibig sabihin po, yung virus ang kasal may kasalanan noon. virus mismo. Mm -hmm. O, virus mismo ang may kasalanan dahil first week, yan ang, yan ang peak ng virus eh. But a virus, actually nawawala ang virus by 5 to 7 days, pawala na yan eh. Bakit na namatay ang patients? What we are looking for is an anti-inflammatory. And just an important note, these anti-inflammatory drugs are not yet approved by the Food and Drug Administration for use against COVID-19. So these are not yet approved for COVID-19 purposes. At least 264 LGUs failed to meet the May 10 deadline of cash aid distribution. Despite this, the DSWD says more than 100 point. 6 billion pesos of the allotted 101.4 billion pesos have been disbursed under its assistance to individuals in crisis situation program. However, only 96 billion pesos were received by beneficiaries. Meanwhile, some 3.2 billion pesos have been used for the Labor Department's cash aid for formal workers. Displaced overseas workers, on the other hand, have already received 1.1 billion pesos of the allotted 1.5 billion peso fund. The Labor Department has also used 1.1 billion pesos of its allotted fund for informal workers, while the Agriculture Department has transferred nearly 3 billion pesos to Land Bank for the financial subsidy for rice farmers. The Supreme Court defers the issuance of a temporary restraining order that would have allowed the ABS-CBN to resume its operations. Instead, the Supreme Court gave the NTC 10 days to submit their comments on the network's TRO plea. The Supreme Court also asks both chambers of Congress to submit a comment or to submit their comments on the matter. PLDT and Smart are now starting to open their stores to assist customers with concerns over their accounts. In an interview with 1PH, PLDT Public Affairs Head Monis Beto says that around the 80 to 90 stores will open in different parts of the country in the next few days. And by May 25, 150 more stores will open up. However, PLDT still encourages customers to transact online. Isberto added that they can settle their payments through PayMaya, MyPLDT Smart App, or online banking. He also said many senior citizens have been going to their physical stores to transact. Marami ho mga matatanda na pumupunta. Ay, delikado yun. Mm. So may edad, no? Mm -hmm. uh, and we are trying to avoid that for both their sake and also for the, you know, for the... Uh, safety of people who are also going to the stores. No? So, nakikiusap ako doon sa mga kamag-anak, yung mga apo, at saka mga oh. anak ng ating mga senior citizen. I-set up naman yun eh. Magpaturuan sila mm. na gumamit itong mga tools na ito para hindi na sila pupunta doon sa mga stores. For more updates, follow News 5, The Philippine Star, and Business World Online. I'm Ed Lingao, We are One News.